Welcome to Aroma Therapy today. My guest today is Dr. Victor Marcial Vega. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thank you, Mercedes. What have been your training? Well, Mercedes, I'm an oncologist, which means I'm a doctor that was trained to treat cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, trained originally at uh, the Johns Hopkins Hospital and University. Mm -hmm. I did there my internship and residency. And after that, I was a professor at Washington University in St. Louis, where I was the chief of the head and neck cancer service. After that, I came to Miami, and I was a professor at the University of Miami for four years, mm -hmm. teaching residents to become oncologists, specifically radiation oncologists, mm -hmm. in which we treat cancer with radiation. And I have been doing private practice and research in uh, alternative and complementary medicines uh, for four years now. How was that transition from, you know, from uh, going to alternative medicine? Well, the reason I got into that yes. was that uh, I was very stressed out. Uh -huh. I was at a point in the practice where I was not feeling well. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of hours of work. As you have seen recently, and it has been starting in the past 10 years, hospitals are not very healthy environments. As you have seen, there are closed environments, no windows, mm -hmm. sometimes very informal and impersonal approach to the patient as well as the doctors are overworked and this uh, led to the point that uh, for me that I was not able to function properly mm -hmm. I was very stressed out I was not sleeping well I was feeling anxious mm -hmm. constantly to the point that I was using Xanax which is a tranquilizer four times a day around the clock I was on antidepressants I went to see psychiatrists psychologists but I, I wasn't feeling any better so at this point, I said to myself, well, what is there that I have not been doing that I could be doing? And I realized that after, get, that's how I discovered many of these approaches of relaxation, mm -hmm. self-awareness, and self-exploration. And that led me to the point where I left all the medications. I'm feeling wonderful, no stress. I wanted to introduce this in the hospitals years ago, mm -hmm. but at the time the hospital did not want to implement this thing, so that's why I went on my own to do the research, and that's how I got into. But now is alternative. What is alternative medicine? First of all, can you explain to us? Well, alternative medicine has been used to describe many things. I don't like the word alternative because alternative means that you're going to do this instead of doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do modern medicine. That's the way I like to describe it. Yeah. And I include anything that will help my patients, whether it's radiation or chemotherapy, although I don't use those modalities very much anymore. I try to use them if necessary. But I combine that with ways to increase the vitality and energy of the body. So, I mean, excuse me, but it's complementary to uh, the mainstream medicine. It's complementary, yes, because both can work together, uh -huh. or you can do one or the other. And uh, what my approach is with the patient is to give nutrition in general. Basically, alternative complementary medicines mm -hmm. are approaches that have to do with nutrition. And nutrition is not only physical nutrition, like food, drink. The most important nutrition is the one that you cannot see. The mental, emotional nutrition, spiritual nutrition, anything that comes into your body, whether it's this light that is hitting us now, or well, the sound of your voice hitting my ears. That's nutrition, that's energy coming into the body. And that will dictate to a large extent how I feel about my environment. And if I let that nutrition affect me in a negative way, mm -hmm. in other words, I have my kids running around the house and they don't let me sleep at night, the baby's crying, or I have a job that requires 12 hours a day and I don't have time to calm down, mm -hmm. I have downtime for myself. That puts me in a state of agitation, and that will make the food that I eat a poison. 
even if it's a piece of broccoli, even if it's a vegetarian meal, mm -hmm. if I am stressed out while I'm eating that, that will affect me more than what I'm actually putting in the body. So that's a very important nutrition to take into account because in the American culture, we're used to saying, well, if I have this illness, let me take this and this and that. Yeah. And alternative medicine means in that definition, well, let me take this herb and that vitamin and this nutrition. So we have to take all those things into account before deciding what to do for a patient. What is, um, how do we choose a doctor, the right doctor? That's a very important question and answer. What I tell my patients is that it's very simple to know what doctor to choose. Because sometimes they come to me, doctor, I have gone to five doctors already and I'm more confused than I was yeah. before. It's true. And I say, why? And I say, well, they gave me this information, this radiation doctor gave me this information, mm -hmm. this chemotherapy doctor. In the case of cancer, I'm giving that as an example. Chemotherapy doctor gave me this other information. Uh, nutritionist gave me this other information about vitamins and minerals. And, mm -hmm. But they have not decided. They're more confused by the information. They have not decided what's best. What I tell them first is, look at your doctor, first of all. Look at them in the eyes. If you see them confused, afraid, stressed out, they cannot give you the type of information you need. You need to have a practitioner that is clear with you, Mm -hmm. that is listening to you, that you know that they're there with you. And you can tell that by looking at them. And how do we know that we are ready for this type of treatment? Whether you're ready or not, first you have to pick someone that can, you can pick someone that can assist you to get the information. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're ready? If the patient, this is, I have a, a way of selecting the patients I see. If the patient is willing to do the work they have to do and change things in their life, mm -hmm. they can do this type of work. Usually when they're doing chemotherapy or radiation, in the case of cancer, or if they're doing antivirals or other medications, in the case of AIDS and other diseases, mm -hmm. I usually do not see the patients unless they're willing to get off the medicines. But this is a very important and tricky factor yeah. here. I cannot tell a patient to stop medicines. I have no right to do that. They have to be willing. Yeah. They have to be wanting, wishing to leave those things. In other words, they come to me when they say, I don't want radiation. I don't want chemotherapy. I don't care if I die, but I don't want those things. There's something inside of me that tells me that's not for me. That's the type of patient I see. And that's the type of patient that can be held by this alternative medicines complementary medicine. What is the, the condition of the patient that you see? How they come to you? What condition their health? They come in different uh, situations, but in general, <clears throat> in general, they come walking. Mm -hmm. They're able to walk. If they're not able to walk or in they're on a stretcher after multiple treatments of chemotherapy and radiation, in other words, the system is weak. The system has been compromised and depressed from so many medications and drugs, I usually do not see that patient. That patient usually has a lesser chance of getting a cure or a positive result, although there's always exception to the rule. So I will make exceptions depending on the situation. But usually the patient has to be able to walk and do their own daily chores by themselves and that's a requirement in order to do the other things I require them to do. Do you see also, you see adult people, also kids, children? I see a lot of children, yes. Yes. And children, fortunately, are in general, of course, because there's always exceptions to the rule, easier to work with than adults. Because, what is that? Because children don't think so much. Children trust more the 